Hey guys, welcome back. So in this portion, we are going to look at what happens if when you're solving a trig equation, it winds up not being one of the special angles, like uh, 30, 45, 60 degrees, or one of the values you can easily read off from the unit circle. So we're going to dive right in with the first example uh, here, which is sine of theta equals 18 seventeenths. Now the process that we're going to use here is very similar to the process we used in part one of this video series, is we are again going to consider in which quadrants the solution could lie. Uh, since here it is 18 17 and that is a positive value, I'm going to consider the quadrants in which sine is positive. So if we use the acronym A smart trig class as a shortcut for remembering where each trig value is positive, all values are positive in quadrant one, including sine, and sine is the only positive value in quadrant two, leaving cosine and tangent to be negative. So I have to be in either quadrant one or quadrant two. So I'm going to note that by identifying the quadrant as either one or two. The next thing that we had done in the last section was to consider the reference angle. Now we can consider those reference angles um, by looking at the ratio. And in all the ones we did in the previous video, it was like one half or root three over two or root two over two, which were the from the special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. This one is from neither of those. So to figure out the reference angle here, we're going to have to use the inverse feature of the calculator. So back when we did right triangle trig, if we were to try to solve for an angle, when I have sine theta is equal to 8 seventeenths, when I take the inverse of both sides, sine inverse on both sides, I'm applying the inverse because an inverse function when composed with um, its non-inverse should eliminate each other, giving me the input or cancel out. It's another way of thinking about that. So I get theta is sine inverse of 8 seventeenths. The only problem here is that this gives me, because it's a function, only one answer, but I know I'm looking for two. So I'm going to have to interpret this value. This sine inverse is really just going to give me the first quadrant or the reference angle. So the reference angle is going to be whatever sine inverse of 8 seventeenths is. Okay, and I can use the calculator to help me identify that value. So I'm going to pull out my handy calculator. I'm going to make sure that I am in degree mode. The reason I'm in degree mode is that I am looking for solutions between 0 and 360 degrees, which means I want a degree answer. So I'm going to have to make sure I'm in degree mode, so my calculator gives me that. And I'm going to use sine inverse, which is the second feature of the sine function. So second sine inverse, and I'm going to do sine inverse of 8 divided by 17. Okay, so that gives me 28 degrees. Now I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, so that looks like 28.1 degrees. So this gives me 28.1 degrees. Now that is the reference angle. And I'm gonna have to put that angle in each quadrant. So I have 28.1 in quadrant one, which is really 28.1 past zero. It's 28.1 degrees. And then I'm also gonna have to do that in the second quadrant. So it gives me 28.1 back from this angle. And we know that in a straight line, there's 180 degrees. So it's 28.1 less from 180. So I'll have to do 180 minus 28.1 to figure out what that angle is in standard position. Now you can use the calculator kind of creatively to help you along with the way. So I'm going to do 180 minus, and then I'm just going to go up and highlight this number and hit enter. And it's going to pull that number down for me. I'll hit enter again, and that'll give me my second quadrant solution. So 151 point nine degrees one five one point nine degrees and just as we did in the last video we've gotten our two solutions our quadrant one and our quadrant two answer the added wrinkle was figuring out the angle when it's not one of the special angles we know but we were able to do that using the inverse feature so something else that you should consider is, will this always give me a solution? Will there always be a solution to one of these trig equations? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. So here is an example that does not have a solution. Sine theta equals 11 fifths. And there's, a, if we were to try to solve this um, in the same way here, we could go through the steps by identifying the quadrants. If it's positive, it would have to be in either quadrant one or quadrant two just like my 8 seventeenths. But when we go to find the reference angle, if I don't notice that this has no solution, and we'll talk about exactly how you can see that at the beginning, say you go to the calculator and you try to do the same process we just did. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to calculate 
whatever sine inverse of 11 fifths is. The calculator is going to go ahead and tell me uh, there's a domain error. What that means is that because I tried to plug in, so I'm going to go to back to my expression. I tried to apply, plug 11 fifths into the inverse function. By domain error, it means that 11 fifths cannot be plugged as an input into this inverse function. And the reason for that, we can actually, to better understand it, look at the graph of uh, sine and 11 fifths. So I'm going to go to y equals. I have sine x here, and I'm also going to type 11 divided by 5. Now, 11 fifths is just a little bit more than 2. So I'm just going to make sure that my window goes up to just a little bit more than 2. So I'm going to make it from negative 2.5 to 2.5 so that I can see um, both 11 fifths and the graph of sine. So I'm going to click graph. The blue one is sine, and that red line is 11 fifths. So if you notice, there is not a single point at which these two graphs intersect. And the reason for that is that the maximum value for sine is 1, and its minimum is negative 1. Its range is from negative 1 to 1. So 11 fifths, it's too big. Sine never actually gets to be that large. So because these two graphs never intersect, there is a no point, there's no value theta that's going to make these two values equal. That means I have no solution to this equation. So there's no reference angle. And overall, this has no solution. Okay, no solution. The reason, or the way to see that off the bat, is that 11 halves is um, 2 and 1 fifth. But the values for sine range from negative 1 to 1. So this function, the largest it will ever be is 1. So I'll never get to be this large. So if you are presented in a situation that if sine, a value is either larger than 1 or less than negative 1, right away I know that can have no solution. There's no way for those two values to be equal. The same will actually go for cosine. So if you have cosine theta, cosine theta also has a range from negative 1 to 1. So same situation. If cosine is equal to something larger than 1, you'll have no solution. The exception to this is tangent, because tangent has a range of all real numbers. So tangent can actually equal anything. So the only two trick functions that you really need to worry about where you could wind up with no solution are the values for sine and the values for cosine. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's get this down. So here's cotangent. <coughs> cotangent's equal to 9 fourths. Now, again, I don't really know the values for cotangent that well offhand, so I'm going to rewrite this as tangent. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, if cotangent is 9 fourths, then tangent will be 4 ninths. And I'm going to go through a similar process. So again, I'll consider the quadrants, a smart trig class. Here, tangent's a positive number, so it could be in quadrant 1 where all values are positive, or quadrant 3 where simply the tangent is positive, and it's reciprocal cotangent. So I could be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. And then to get the reference angle, which will abbreviate RL, I can use the inverse feature of the calculator. So tan inverse of that ratio, 4 ninths, should give me that reference angle. OK, so I'm going to go back to the calculator. I'm going to quit the graph. I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to do second tan inverse of 4 divided by 9. We get 23.96 degrees. Okay. Now, if I'm rounding that to the nearest tenth, I'm going to have uh, a cascade. So I will have 6 is going to round this 9 up. So overall, this will round to 24 degrees. That's my reference angle. So I'm going to put 24 degrees in quadrant 1, which is 24 past 0. So my quadrant 1 answer will be 24 degrees. And then in quadrant 3, I'm going to go 24 past 180, which will put me at 104 degrees. So there are my two solutions in this context. Okay. So that's how you can use your calculator to help you determine the reference angle when it's not one of the special angles. And the interpretation is the same way. We're going to put that reference angle in each of the potential quadrants to find the two solutions in that unit circle.